Hey, my name is Sippy Way Baleka. I am the founder of Fitness Trucking and author of the new book, Four Minute Fit. And you're listening to the 360 Entrepreneur with Jan Ilunga. This is episode 204. And today we talk about the four minute fit. Here we go. Welcome to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the show for entrepreneurs and small business owners who dream big and want to do bigger. Join some of the world's top entrepreneurs, internet marketers, and best-selling authors as they share their inspiring stories, their struggles, and give actionable tips that will help you build, grow, and promote your online business. Here's your host, Yanni Lunga. Well, hello there. Are you ready for a new exciting episode of the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast? I know I am, and trust me, this is a good one, and this is a must listen, especially if you are sitting a lot. Perhaps you own an online business, you're sitting a lot, you're spending a lot of time in front of a computer, maybe you don't get to exercise so much. If that's the case, then today's episode is definitely for you. We talked about health in the past with Tom Rath and Dr. Michelle Seeger, for example. But health, fitness, you feeling good is such an important topic that I thought it would be good to cover it again. And today we do so from a different angle. In this episode, you're going to hear about a system, some actionable things you can do to become a more fitness-oriented person with just four minutes a day. The show notes for today's interview are over at yanilunga.com for a slash episode 204. All right, time to get started. Here's the interview with Sipiwe Baleka from sipiwebaleka.com. The person who's here with us today has done so much. He's a Yale University graduate. He's the first African-American swimmer that has been named to the all Ivy League swim team. The documentary about him, Changing Lanes, the CP with Baleka story, won an Emmy Award. If this wasn't enough, there is more. He's the founder of Fitness Tracking and is the author of a brand new book called Four Minute Fit, the Metabolism Accelerator for the Time Crunched Desk bound and stressed out, and he's here with us. I'm so pumped to welcome on the show America's fittest tracker, Sipiwe Baleka. Sipiwe, how's it going? It's going fantastic. Thanks for that introduction. It sounds pretty, pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, you, <laughs> you have to tap on the shoulder the person who's there with you because it, I simply read some of the things you have done. You've been quite busy, huh? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's been amazing and especially in the last few years, you know, starting a business and getting some attention for for mm-hmm. helping people and it's uh I'm very grateful. Yeah, yeah, I, I bet and I said you have a new book out and it's interesting like when I saw when I started to read your book The 4 Minute Fit it was interesting because we've talked about health in the past and here on the podcast, but your book has a very specific approach for the fact that there's plenty of fitness books, but you have written a book that is designed for, as the title or as the headline says, the metabolism accelerator for the time crunched, desk bound and stressed out. So this book is perfect for entrepreneurs as well, right? Exactly. The book is basically what I discovered working with truck drivers Mm -hmm. and they they live in a unique environment. They have unique schedules. They don't have access to a kitchen. They're on the road. So many restrictions that they have. When we found that my program actually worked for them, we realized, well, if it'll work for truck drivers, it can work for anyone. So if you're sitting at a desk, if you're traveling, mm-hmm. you know, these days everybody's time crunched. You know, you have a job, you have kids, you're going right. to school. So we did realize, wow, this this could help anyone because it will fit into their schedule. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, exactly. I think it, what what you just said, CP, and the, I think your approach with the with the overall four minute fit thing is is exactly that. As you said, everybody is busy. We feel that yeah, we don't have so much time, but with the program you've put together, there is really no excuse. And even the book says there are no more excuses about time, about equipment, confusing food plans, or money. The first question I have to ask you when it comes to being healthy, exercising, and so forth has to do with the when. Ideally, if we could choose, which would which would you say, Sipiwe, is the best part of the day to exercise? If we can be flexible and we can exercise in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening? So there are two optimal times to do your exercise. Mm-hmm. The first is before you start your day or your work, some people work the night shift. So mm-hmm. whenever you get ready to start your day, whatever time that may be, is the best time. And the next best time is any other time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the reason for this is, and what I found with the drivers, and I'm finding this to be true with a lot of people who are overweight or obese or, or, or just haven't been working out, the mistake that we're making is we're not turning our metabolism on before we start our day. Mm. That's the biggest mistake. As long as you you are awake and you're working, you want your metabolism working for you. So in order to do that, you got to turn it on. Mm. That That's a very good point you mentioned, Sipiwe, because I was thinking, as you said, before work, and I was thinking that, yeah, especially if maybe we work with different schedules, as you said, the case of truck tra- tra- drivers, one may feel, well, well I can't really could go to the gym with all these different schedules and things like that. But the, the plan you've put together, it's something that can be done, can be followed anywhere, right? Because I, I even saw some some of the videos you've made, the, this exercising, the plan can be done really anywhere from the hotel room to a park. That's the idea is in order to reasonably commit to something for the long term, it has to be convenient. And when I was designing the program, you know, I'm trying every kind of fitness product, every kind of fitness program, <laughs> every kind of equipment I had on the truck, you name it, dumbbells, kettlebells, ankle weights, wrist weights, weighted vests, weighted vests with resistance bands, perfect push-up <laughs> stands, standalone pull-up bar. I mean, you name it. At some point, I had the equipment with me on the truck. And one of the things that I learned was if I had to set up equipment, or if the workout took too long, or if I had to change clothes, or if I had to go somewhere to do the workout. Every time there was a layer of complexity, eventually I would use that as an excuse not to work out. So I got to the point where literally I had to be able to stop the truck, open the door, right on the side of the truck, do 15 minutes of exercise without any equipment, without changing clothes, 15 Mm -hmm. minutes, and then get right back in the truck and start driving. Anything more than that added a layer of complexity that would get in the way. So that's where the program, that's where I started, 15 minutes. And then the research that we collected, we used all these digital health devices on the truck drivers. And for the first time in history, we were getting real-time data on the physiology of the driver, just like we were mm-hmm. getting real-time data on the engine performance of the truck or the, you know, the, uh, the temperature in the refrigerated unit of the trailer. And so I was measuring the metabolism of drivers every minute of the day for 91 days and looking at the research and, and following the drivers that go through the program. And the average weight loss in the program after 13 weeks was 19 pounds or 7% of your body weight. Uh, but we had drivers follow the program exactly the way it was designed, and they're losing 30, 40, 50, even 60 pounds in 13 weeks. Wow. Yeah, without skipping meals. So, I mean, it was phenomenal. Hmm. But the thing, Jan, that caught my attention was it had nothing to do with the calories they were consuming, mm-hmm. and it didn't have anything to do with how long they were working out. Everyone that lost weight, they had three things in common. They had to gradually reduce their carbohydrates by a minimum of 10%, gradually increase their protein by a minimum of 5%. But the key, every single one of them had to get at least four minutes of vigorous or very high intense exercise. 
And if you did those three things, it didn't matter who you were, male or female, young or old, new driver, old driver, veteran, it didn't matter who you were, you got the results. So that four minutes seemed to be the magic number. And then I hit on that and I was like, even if you don't have 15 minutes, right. you wake up in the morning, you're running late, you're like trying to brush your teeth, you're going to jump for a quick shower. And I tell the executives, the ones that are you know traveling and super busy, hey, you have to have a behavior trigger. And for those executives, most of them, they brush their teeth and then they go take a shower. And I'm saying in that space between brushing your teeth and taking your shower, right there, do your four minutes. Mm -hmm. You're going to take your shower. You're going to get dressed anyways. That's the perfect time. Knock it out and then go about your day. I love it. Thank you for, for sharing that with us, CP. And I mean, I, I like the fact that you made the, the example of, of some of the results or the outcomes of the program. And you said it, you wanted to create something. And that's what the, the four minute fit is actually is something that can be done anywhere. You said even on the side of the road and and you said it's something that isn't time consuming. So we can really make it part of of our habits, our daily habits. And it doesn't have to be 20 minutes, doesn't have to be 15 minutes, doesn't have to be five minutes is the four minute fit. So the next question I think I should ask you CP way is obviously in the book, you really take the magnifying glass and you break down the four minute fit approach and you talk about everything there is to it. But if you were to condense it and summarize it a little bit, could you give everybody an overview of what the four minute fit looks like? What are the steps involved in it? Okay, so I try to keep it real simple, Jan. Right. <laughs> because I'm I'm talking to so many different people from so many different walks of life. So four minute fit and its most simplistic formula is this. Turn your metabolism on before you start your day by moving with maximum intensity, mm -hmm. any movement you can do, maximum intensity for four minutes, eat protein right after that four minutes, and then eat some form of protein every three hours. That's it. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Four minutes before you start your day, maximum intensity. And what that does is it creates a maximum demand for energy in your body. You're going as hard as you can using all these muscles. Your body is saying, we need energy fast and we need to send it everywhere in the body. And so after it runs through the store of glucose in your muscles and in your liver, which is for most people is going to last maybe 60 to 90 seconds. After that, your body still needs this high demand for energy. Where's it going to get the energy from? Well, it's going to get it from the stored fat. And so about two and a half to three minutes of engaging the fat burning system at that level of intensity is what it's like turning the radio on to like 10. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then once you do that, you're going to be burning fat at an accelerated rate for the next couple of hours. That's step one, turning your metabolism on. Step two is, is once you turn it on, you want to keep it on. And the way you do that is by giving your metabolism work to do. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is by eating. And the key thing is you got to eat the right thing, which is protein. Protein causes your metabolism to work harder to digest, a lot harder than, say, having to break down or metabolize carbohydrates. So if you think of your metabolism as a fire, once you get the fire going, what do you have to do to keep it going? Add more wood. <laughs> yes, you got to. And protein is that wood. And so that's the secret sauce. That's the magic in my book, Four Minute Fit. But then I also designed a 13-week program that right. can walk a person from getting off the couch, not having worked out for a year or even 10 years, and walking them week by week through this process to mm -hmm. get them to the point where they can do four minutes all out and getting to the point where they can do a maximum of 15. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes maximum intensity seems to be the point at which Going beyond that, there's the law of diminishing returns. So people love my program because I, I'll tell you straight off the bat, I'm going to limit you to 15 minutes of workout and that's it. <laughs> that's all you got to do. I don't want you doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Those are the steps of the four minute feed. Thank you, CP, for sharing them with us. And you said it starts with uh, some exercising. And I know in the book, actually, I have the book right in front of me here. I read part of it. I'm not done with it yet, but I'm really liking what I'm seeing. And I can share with everybody here that you have some images and explanation. You have a, like an array of 
exercises, workouts that you share. So again, things you can do anywhere. So if you're here with CPU and I, it doesn't matter where you are right now, you could implement the four minute fit as you're listening to him and I here. <laughs> yes, you can. absolutely. <laughs> and you know what, Jan, in the book, I think there's 32 different body weight exercises, right? So there's no equipment and we call them multi-muscular exercises. So we will kind of show you what are the, the best ones to do to create that demand for energy. But I like to emphasize to your listeners to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the movements are. It's any movement you can do. The key is, is maximum intensity. So I have clients they can't do squats the way I can do squats. They may not be able to do jumping jacks or mountain climbers or any of these things that they see me doing. And I tell them that's okay. As long as you can do some kind of movement, maybe you have a, an ankle or a knee or a hip issue in, in your right leg, that's not going to stop you from moving your arms with maximum intensity. So there's no injury that can prevent you from doing this. We can work around any kind of you know injury or right. ailment, any kind of aches and pains. The key, once you understand it's any movement you can do, then it takes some of the learning curve out of it for people who might be intimidated by having to learn a whole bunch of new exercises or use a whole bunch of new equipment or machines. And, you know, we had to eliminate all of that. And just what is the 2% things that you need to know that you can do right now that are going to give you 80% of the results that you want? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. And thank you for making that qualification. I think it's important. And actually, that's something I was going to ask you because I said that there, there is like, you said, 32 different exercises, like plenty of options, but it starts with just doing something. But I have to ask you, CP, for some advice for exercising itself. So if somebody is listening to you and I and hasn't been exercising for quite some time. What advice do you have? I mean, what are some of the things to think about as we exercise to avoid, for example, muscle, muscle injuries or things like that? How should we go about exercising? Okay, that's a great question, Jan. A lot of my clients, not only have they not been exercising, they, you know, they're overweight or they're obese. So mm -hmm. their main purpose for exercising is to lose weight. They want to lose their belly, mm -hmm. which means they want to burn fat. It's kind of like baking a cake. You can mix all the ingredients. You can have all the equipment. You can have this you know, great workout plan. You can have all the ingredients. But if you don't turn the oven on, you come back 40 minutes later, you're not going to have a cake. Mm -hmm. So what I tell the drivers when they're first starting is, you want to exercise to the point where you're breathing so hard you can barely finish a sentence. Mm. That's how you know that you're, you're getting enough intensity where <laughs> you have trouble talking, okay? <laughs> as long as you're getting to that point, you're being effective. Now, if you feel any pain, right, definitely stop what you're doing. Pain is bad, okay? Soreness is okay. And a lot of drivers after the first week or the second week, yeah, they're going to feel sore. That's okay. You'll get past that. Mm -hmm. Excessive soreness is not good. So right. <laughs> it's better for a driver to go with maximum intensity than it is for them to pace themselves. And a lot of people won't be able to do four minutes. You might only be able to go 60 seconds or 90 seconds, and that's okay. You do your 60 seconds or your 90 seconds with his maximum intensity, and then that's it. And you do that for a week, and then guess what? The following week, your fitness is a little better. Now you're going to be able to go maybe you know 90 seconds or 100 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then the week after that, you're going to go 120 seconds or 104. So you keep going till you build yourself up to, to the four minutes. After you do your, your exercise... You want to start the recovery process. So you want to give your body all the things that it needs so that you won't feel sore the next day. So you want to eat right after the workout. And the great thing about this is when you turn your fat burning system on at that level, for, and it's going to be on for the next hour or two, that's the one time you can pretty much eat anything and not do any <laughs> damage, okay? Um, tell the clients, you know, if there are things that you're like, man, I really don't think I should be eating this, you can still eat that. Your body is going to burn up the carbohydrates. They're not going to get stored as fat. You're giving your body all the things that it needs to start the recovery process so that you feel better the next day. Um, having said that, 
I am not saying go out and eat 10 Krispy Kreme donuts after your workout, okay? <laughs> that is not what I'm saying. Uh, but maybe you like eating a Pop-Tart. Maybe you do like eating a donut. You can eat that after a workout and you're not going to hurt yourself. But the, it's important to eat something after that workout just to make sure your body has everything it needs to recover. But most importantly, just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Moving is fun. Shadow boxing is something that's fun. You can pretend you're fighting someone and, <laughs> and, and you can generate all of this adrenaline and then remind yourself, you know, I'm turning my fat burning system on and feel good about doing that. You're, you're not going to be exercising for, for an hour. In fact, changing the concept, Jan, was the biggest thing that I had to do. Most of us, we've been conditioned to think that in order to get any kind of weight loss results, you got to go to the gym for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, maybe 90 minutes. If your concept is, man, I got to go to the gym for 60 minutes and you only have 25 minutes available to you, what do you do? The average person says, what? I don't have time to work out. I've got 25 minutes available to me, but I don't have time to work out because in my mind, I think it takes 60 minutes. Right. So by changing it to, man, it, 15 minutes for maximum results, but even if you don't have 15 minutes, you got four minutes, just get started. It doesn't matter where your fitness level is, just get started. And if you do it consistently every day, your fitness level is going to improve and you're going to work your way up. Mm, I love it. Thank you so much. This is such an interesting conversation. And before we continue, and I want to ask you about a couple of extra nutrition tips. Before we do that, I just want to ask you an additional question, CP, on the exercising part of the four minute fit. If you mentioned many of your clients focus on losing weight and they have a belly and they want to get rid of it. So when it comes to exercising, if there is somebody listening to an ICP where and he or she is like, okay, I want to work on my belly, so on my abdomen, do you have any recommendations on how to do an effective workout? Like, is it good to work on the abs and then to work on the backs? Like, should we always work on both muscles in, the, in this specific case or... Okay, yeah, and that's another great question. And I get this one a lot because <laughs> most people, that's what they want. They want the flat belly. They want the six-pack abs, okay? <laughs> so what I tell them is this. You could do all the ab work. You could do all the muscle building work that you want. But if you don't burn off the fat that is covering it, you're never going to see it. Mm -hmm. And this is a mistake a lot of people make. So it's not about doing crunches because that's what's going to work your ab muscles. It's about, man, how do I engage my fat burning system at maximum capacity so that I can burn off the fat that's covering the ab muscles I already have? If you do burn off the fat, you're going to see what you have already. And you, a lot of people find out, well, they, they have muscles. They do have some definition. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I got to do arms and core this day and back and legs this day. And it, we take all of that programming out of it. And I'm not saying that that programming isn't important. It's important for a certain group of people who have a certain purpose. But for the vast majority of people who their purpose is I want to lose weight, again, the goal of working out is how do I engage my fat burning system and train it to burn fat at maximum capacity? In order to do that, you have to demand by using all these different muscles all at the same time that your body needs mm -hmm. energy all at once. So all of that desire to, to build the abs, you'll get there by following this plan because it's targeting the fat burn first. Maybe eight weeks or 12 weeks or however long at a certain point, once you bring your body fat down, at that point, you may, send, you may say to yourself, okay, I want bigger biceps now, or I want better deltoids. And that's when you can start strength training to build or craft or sculpt that ideal body that you may want. But there's a lot of people that th that's not what they're thinking about right now. They want to lose weight. They want to prevent diabetes. They want to prevent high blood pressure. They've got high blood sugar. They're at risk for sleep apnea. A lot of this is, it's not vanity, man. It's medical. Yeah, no, exactly. Thank you for, for really stressing that. I mean, we are talking about exercising and exercising can be understood 
or can be done for many different reasons, as you as you well said. But first and foremost is about our health. So it's about living a healthier and a happier and more gratifying life for sure. And early on, Sipiwe, you talked about the wood element of the using a metaphor, of course, of the four minute feet. So the importance of eating protein. And you said that well, after a workout, we could eat pretty much anything, but protein would be a deal. And then you said that after that, we should be eating more protein on a regular basis every few hours. So I was wondering if you have some suggestions that you could share with us, some examples, some quote unquote recipes or types of foods that you think would fit very well with the four, four minute plan. So do you have any any recommendations for protein oriented food we could eat? Yes, probably on the nutrition side of four minute fit. One of the most important concepts is, again, feeding the metabolism, keeping it burning like a fire. So meal frequency is the foundation. That's the first step in the nutrition side. You want to get to the point where you're eating a minimum of five times a day. So that's breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, and dinner, Mm -hmm. okay? That's sort of the minimum amount to get maximum results. Every three hours, you're wanting to keep the metabolism on. You got to understand that first. Now, to eat every three hours requires a little bit of preparation, a little bit of planning. Right. Okay. Um, You're not going to be able to leave your desk every three hours and go drive (laughs) to a restaurant or go home and cook everything. That's not what we're talking about. And yes, I do recommend eating protein because your metabolism has to work harder. So good protein that's readily available to you, that doesn't take a whole lot of effort. We're talking things like nuts, okay? Almonds and walnuts are great, but Mm -hmm. any kind of nuts. And we're not talking a whole bunch. I mean, a handful. It's a sufficient amount Mm -hmm. that will give your metabolism work to do. So a handful of nuts, all your your meats, you know, especially your lean meats. Um, And so you're talking, you know, your, your chicken and your fish. And, you know, I don't have a problem with red meats and turkey and all of that. And a lot of drivers, they'll get the beef jerky. I just tell them, try to get the best quality that you can get, right. okay? <laughs> um, beef jerky is a good snack. If you can tolerate dairy, okay? Dairy products, good protein source. Greek yogurt is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, those little tins of tuna are perfect. And if they come with crackers, just ditch the crackers and just eat the tuna. Eggs, any way you like them, uh, those are great. And then, you know, there's all kinds of protein products on the market now, whether they're protein drinks or protein bars. I don't get into specifics because what's available to one person in one country or somewhere around the globe, it may be different. So what I teach is you're not trying to maximize protein. It's not like the more protein you get, the more weight you're going to lose. You're just trying to get enough to keep the metabolism going. So when when you're going to choose a protein bar or a protein drink, Choose the one with the least amount of carbs. Mm -hmm. See, the other important concept in 4-Minute Fit is understanding, and this is critical for someone that drives most of the day or someone that's sitting at a desk most of the day or even flying in an airplane, you know, most of the day or several times of the week. You got to understand that when you eat food that has carbohydrates in it, the carbohydrates, that's your potential energy. That's your potential fuel. And energy is valuable. I mean, you got to pay for electricity, right? You got to pay for heating. You got to pay for fuel, right? Right. (laughs) So it's valuable. If you give your body something valuable in the form of this potential energy, but your body doesn't need the energy right then and there because you're just sitting behind the wheel or you're just sitting at the desk, your body's not going to throw it away. It's going to save it. It's going to hold on to it for later. So it's going to store it as fat. So this is the problem with a sedentary lifestyle in eating carbs. A big mistake that a lot of my clients are making is when you think of healthy food, the first thing that comes to mind is what? Raw fruits and vegetables, right? I mean, that's our epitome of a healthy diet. And for example, you know, fruit is got a lot of vitamins and minerals. And so in that sense, it's very healthy. It gives you the vitamins and minerals. But if your goal is to lose weight, and you're sedentary, and you're sitting down, and your body doesn't need that energy, and you're eating grapes, and bananas, and oranges, and apples, that's all carbs, and no protein. 
So you're just putting carbs on top of carbs on co- top of carbs and you're just sitting there and your body is like, oh, potential fuel, potential energy. Let's store it. Let's store mm-hmm. it. And we don't tend to think of eating a banana or an orange or an apple as storing fat. So I'll have guys that are like, man, I got to start eating healthy. So they're driving. They never take the time to log their nutrition and find out what they're eating that is doing the most damage. So they don't fix what's doing the most damage. But what they do is they just start adding a whole bunch of fruit and a whole bunch of carbs. And then after two weeks, they haven't lost any weight and they get frustrated and they quit. They're like, man, this isn't working. And that's because they didn't understand the metabolic effect of carbs and proteins. So it's really important. Yeah, you want to eat these nuts, you know, low-fat string cheese, anything, maybe eight, nine, 10 grams of protein, limit the carbs, you're going to get the metabolic effect. Nice. Well, thank you. CPU, this hasn't been an interview. This has been more of a, of a crash course, of a workshop <laughs> on, on, on really practical things we can do, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but right now to live a healthier life. And I mean, you, you share different protein food we can have. You said, obviously, there is protein bars, drinks, and these things, but those may not be available depending on the city, the country, and so forth. So you shared some things that are available pretty much anywhere. And one question I have to ask you before we wrap up this interview, CPW, has to do with keeping track. So you said, when, especially when it comes to the nutrition part of the four minute fit, it's important to, to do a little bit of planning. And of course, we could do, we could go old school and use pen and paper. We could use our computer, but there is a tool that nowadays almost anybody has, which is the smartphone, right? There is a smartphone we can use for many different things. So I wanted to see, and this is kind of a rhetorical question because I know you mentioned it in the book. Is there an app you would recommend people take a look at when it comes to keeping track of things, journaling things, planning things so that they can really make the most out of the four minute fit? Yes. I. When it comes to logging your nutrition, I, I think everybody should do this for at least seven days. Log everything you eat and Mm -hmm. drink for a minimum of seven days. But I would encourage people to do it for even longer, like a month or maybe up to three months every year. Because we do have the smartphone and there's an app that that I really find to be incredibly helpful. It's called Chronometer. Mm -hmm. C-R-O-N-O-M-E-T-E-R. Chronometer. It's a great app. It makes it super easy to log your food. And, you know, if you're eating food that comes in a package, you can scan the barcode and it'll put it right in there. But the reason why I love Chronometer as an app is because not only does it track your macronutrients, it tracks your micronutrients. Every single day, our bodies need 60 essential nutrients in order for every single cell in the body to function at optimal capacity. Miss any one of these 60 essential nutrients, something is not working at an optimal level. Hmm. Uh, It could be even a small amount, a trace amount of some, you know, something most of us have never even heard of, like selenium or something (laughs) like that. Um, In the past, before chronometer and even before food logging apps, you couldn't know very well the quality and the quantity of your nutrition. Like now, Jan... If you were to log your food for seven days, you could get a nutrition score based on how much of each of the 60 essential nutrients you consume that week Mm -hmm. and how much you need based on your age, your weight, your lifestyle. And you could know with pretty good accuracy from zero to 100 how effective or how good your nutrition was. In the past, you, it was almost impossible to do that. You'd All have right. to have stacks of reference books. You've got a calculator. You've got to look up everything like an apple and the size and write down stuff. And you're going to have to do a lot of math on your own. And it's going to take you a lot of time to get that score for a day, let alone a score for a week or a month or a year. But now you can, you can know, you know, is your nutrition, is it at 66%? And if it is, are you going to settle for that? Because in so many areas of our lives, we would never settle for 66%. I mean, there's a lot of entrepreneurs and business people, you know, out there that are listening to your show would never settle for 66% of the profits they should or could be making. They're not going to settle for 66% 
of your paycheck. And I ask people all the time, do you want to settle for 66% of all the happiness you could have in your life? Mm -hmm. I mean, do we tell our kids, let's go to school and strive to be in the 66 percentile? No, we don't. But one of the foundational elements of life, you know, you have air, you can't go very long without air. Okay. (laughs) You have water. Okay. You can go a little longer without water, but you know what? Three days, four days, maybe seven if you're lucky. Sleep, you need that, okay? You're not going to be doing too well. You go four or five days without any sleep. Food, it's up there in the top five of most important things you need just to be alive and function. Why would we settle for something, you know, 66% or even lower in some cases? So the nutrition log itself as a concept, it allows you, especially with chronometer where you can track the micronutrients now, which is totally valuable because I've seen reports say it's like 90, 92% of most Americans, for example, have micronutrient deficiencies. Okay. Go out and ask someone, Jan, hey, you probably have five micronutrient deficiencies. Can you name which nutrients you're deficient in? <laughs> okay. So if you're not aware, you can't do anything about it. You can't improve it. Right, exactly. But you can, at the end of a year, you could. You could, man, okay, so I'm deficient in zinc, so I need to eat more pumpkin seeds and oysters, or I'm deficient in selenium. Let me get some more Brazil nuts or whatever. And you could strategically improve your score, and that's one of the values of chronometer and just logging your food in general. But the other thing that's so important, now, and I got to tell you this, this is going to be crucial for your listeners, is this. The problem with most diet and nutrition plans is they give you a menu. Or they give you a food list and say, here, we want you to eat like this, okay? This is where we want you to be. And let's call that the end result or step Z. But they don't do anything to analyze your nutrition profile and find out where you are. Mm -hmm. What if you're at step D? What you need is step E. For you to go from D to Z all on your own is going to be overwhelming. This is why most people fail at diets mm-hmm. and nutrition programs is because they got to learn a whole new set of uh, recipes. They got to get a whole new set of foods. It may significantly change their budget. They may even have to buy a whole new set of cooking utensils. And then when you try new recipes for the first time, it takes you two or three or four times to get it right. So now you got to eat this crappy food that you made that you spent all this money on. <laughs> It's just so many things that a person has to do on their own to get from where they are to where they the plan says they need to be. Now, and I already said this, let's say you do eat all the right foods, but you never stop to see, well, what are you eating that's doing all the damage? And you're still eating the food doing all the damage. Exactly. (laughs) You're not going to get the best results. So what I teach in 4-Minute Fit is a process to use your nutrition log, use this app called Chronometer to find out what is your nutrition profile. In the first week of the, of the program, you don't even make any changes to your nutrition. All you're trying to do is find out what is your nutrition profile. And then in the book, it teaches you how to then analyze it to find out what's the thing you eat regularly that's causing the most damage. And then you spend the next week just fixing that one thing. Mm. And once you get that fixed, then you do an analysis again. Well, what's the next thing I'm eating that's doing the most damage? And what you're doing is making one strategic change each week that is having a maximum effect on boosting your metabolism. And that's a much smarter way to build your nutrition than just say, okay, I'm going to wholesale try to change everything all at once. No, change one thing strategically. Well, you heard it. There's the key to really get started with the four minutes fit and take it from there so that you're going to live a healthier, happier and more productive life. And you heard CPO's advice. He mentioned chronometer. I'll make sure to link to the app as well as CPO's site, cpobaleka.com, his Twitter account at fitness tracking. And of course, a link to the book, four minute fit, the metabolism accelerator for the time crunched, desk bound and stressed out in the show notes page. Sipiwe, this has been a fantastic conversation. I want to say thank you so much for taking time and being here with us and for telling us more about the 4-Minute Fit and your new book. And the final question I have for you is, if somebody would like to connect with you or they have questions or anything like that, what would you say is the best way to do that? Is it via Twitter? Uh, The best way to connect with me is to go to www.sipiwebaleka.com and they can go there and they can even do slash 
360 Entrepreneur. And you can also see some of the workouts that I teach the uh, my clients mm-hmm. if you go to www.truckerterritory.com and you click on Truck Fit and you're going to see some videos of me talking about 4-Minute Fit and how we do things and uh, and you can reach me that way. And right. Jan, I mean, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me on 360 Entrepreneur. It's been a great conversation. Likewise. Thank you so much. And again, like always, you're going to find the links to everything CP and I have talked about in this interview, including the last couple of websites he mentioned in the show notes. And we are back. You heard it. Just get started. Really, just get started. You have plenty of resources in the show notes page over at yanilunga.com for a slash episode 204, you find the links to everything we've talked about. So CPU's book, the site he mentioned with some video exercises, there is the app chronometer he mentioned. So everything really you need in terms of information and motivation is there again over at yanilunga.com for a slash episode 204. Zero four. This is it for today. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to cover podcast advertising. So if you're a podcaster or you're about to launch a podcast, those are two episodes you don't want to miss out. Thank you for listening to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast. For more tips and tools, head over to www.janilunga.com.